How's it going guys and welcome to Formar Ranch. Now today I'm going to be covering, I guess you can call it a review, but for different reasons than what I normally do. Most of my reviews, if I see something that's kind of new to the market or cutting edge, if you want to call it that, I try to get ahead of it if possible, if I have means to, to share what's up and coming or what products are out there. This particular review video is going to be focusing on a Bear Creek Arsenal 20 inch upper that I have. The reason, the main motivation why I say this is a little bit different video is I'm actually kind of rooting for the underdog, so to speak, uh, when it comes to Bear Creek Arsenal. I've recently stumbled across a handful of negative comments, some of them unfortunately even coming from larger YouTube channels, just really dogging on Bear Creek Arsenal. Now, maybe it's because of my background, I'm a mechanical engineer and I understand what it takes to actually design a product and bring it to market and all the blood, sweat and tears that goes into it. Um, Maybe that's why I'm rooting for the underdog, but the thing that really bothers me most about some of these YouTube reviewers, if you want to call them that, is that without even having a product in front of them, without even testing it, they just want to, uh, again, dog on companies purely based off of the price point in which they're coming at. So on that note, I purchased this 20 inch upper, including the bolt carrier group and charging handle for under $300. So. I purchased this for $287 and on that note, that was my money. This is not sponsored by Bear Creek Arsenal. They did not reach out to me um, asking if I'd be willing to do a review. No relationship exists whatsoever. I doubt they even know who I am. That being said, this is my true unbiased opinion. It is a sample size of one, so take that for what it's worth. But I just wanted to speak to my uh, real world experiences with uh, this Bear Creek Arsenal 20 inch upper. And again, this is kind of inspired by the fact that I've seen people just hating on them because they're offering um, affordable, um, you know, uppers and firearm components, etc. which instead of, you know, commending a company, assuming that they do it successfully, which we'll, we'll get into that here in a second, people still wanna trash them because of their budget parts. And that's kind of the opposite of what I feel we should be doing. But anyways, that's my opinion. This is my channel, just sharing my thoughts with you. Um, I'm going to just go through again my experiences. Uh, I'm not being paid by them. This is really what happened. Again, sample size of one. So first things first, I take it out of the box. And again, with all these negative uh, comments and stuff circling around, I'm expecting it to look like a piece of junk. And it, it just didn't. It, the fit, the finish, everything looked very good. No blemishes, scratch, scuffs, any of that. I will say the only thing that could potentially be disappointing to some of you guys is that this hand guard, this particular one on this 20 inch barrel, again, sample size of one that I have in front of me, um, when you sent the bolt carrier group home, it did make a kind of a, a loud pinging noise or it kind of resonated the hand guard, similar to what some people experience with different kinds of flash hiders after firing. Some that, you know, the, the harmonics of the material just kind of ring and resonate. I got a little bit of that when sending the bolt home. So I'm assuming if you fired it, you would get a little bit of that as well. Other than, you know, if you're wrenching it up, resting it on a bench like this, you may not. But as soon as I put some of this polymer Magpul furniture, which is kind of standard, I, it gives me a better purchase on things. And I like the way it looks. Uh, zero uh, resonation, no noise coming from the handguard whatsoever. So um, that solved that problem for me. Again, giving you my unbiased experiences so you can draw your own conclusions. Now, moving forward, the next thing I wanted to do is obviously take it to the range, see how accurate it is, and see how reliable it is. So a little bit of information about my particular setup here. Again, I kind of wanted to gear this into a budget A2 build. You can see this fixed stock, something different, 20 inch, heavy barrel that is fluted. It is a one in seven twist um, barrel. Your standard birdcage flash hider. Nothing super fancy. It has a M-lock handguard. Um, it looks like, I, I forget the specs. I'll put it on the screen here if I can find it, but it looks about to be about a 15 inch M-lock handguard. Again, that originally made a little bit of a ringing noise. Now, that being said, uh, for all the testing or accuracy testing of this, I was using this AccuFire. Noctis TR1, this is a digital optic. So I want you to keep that in mind when I discuss the actual accuracy of this as well. I truly believe that maybe I could have shaved a, a tenth of an inch at the very least if I was using a regular optic. Um, you know, I could argue a dozen reasons, you know, a little bit of latency effect. It is digital, gets a little bit more pixelated when you zoom in, I could still get the job done. But again, trying to give you as much information to make your own conclusions. So one last data point, other than the fact that I did use a digital optic for the accuracy testing of this upper, um, to give another baseline, because I knew I was gonna be kind of firing a little bit more rapidly, switching ammo types, you know, time is money, right guys? So I wanted to wrap up the testing of this. I put a Flare Mini, which is a little rubber ring looking item. It's made by a company, Caveman LLC. Um, again, they, this one's their Flare Mini. And what it does is as the barrel heats up, 
the uh, rubber on this will actually discolor so you know if your barrel is getting a little bit too hot. So I monitored that to make sure that the barrel temperature was consistent when switching between different ammunition types. I find it's a pretty useful tool and it's easy to just leave on so that's why it's currently still on the upper. When I took it to the range for the first time I noticed that the M-Lock bipod adapter I wanted to use on this handguard had set screws that were going to be a little bit too long um, that were actually going to slightly contact the barrel. I noticed as I was tightening it down the screws went up and pressure was actually put on the barrel and I could tell that the barrel was definitely not free floating. And it almost looked like it was wanting to push the barrel up some. Nonetheless, uh, like I said, I'm sharing my real results. I did go ahead and take a three round group with that Hornaday 55 grain soft point ammo that I have personally come to love. It's pretty reliable and accurate in my other 223 platforms and I can grab it right off the shelf locally in Texas. So it's kind of my go-to hog hunting round and I was hopeful that this upper would like it like my other uppers did. So I took a three round group with that ammo and I actually got a 1.14 inch group through a digital optic at 100 yards with hardware in contact with the barrel, throwing off the natural frequency of that barrel and definitely pushing on it. Still got just over a one MOA group. So I was pretty pleased with that. I was pretty hopeful it would improve once I removed that hardware. Again, I was just curious to know, is it going to affect it? So I removed that hardware and took a, um, a three shot group at 50 yards, assuming that that zero was going to kind of shift and change. And at 50 yards, I got a 0.38 inch group centered center, again, a three shot group. So at 50 yards, a 0.38 inch group is basically those projectiles, kind of those holes touching um, ever so slightly. So pretty good group. Obviously, you know that at 100 yards, that should roughly double. And so that's what I did. I, I took it to 100 yards and fired two more three round groups with that Hornaday um, ammunition. And one of them came in at right at 0.5 inches center to center. The other one at 0.44 inches center to center. So let's just stop for a second right there. Um, first of all, I was happy because that's the ammo I was hoping to use so I can have consistent hunting ammo across my 223 platforms. And uh, on the other hand, I was also very happy that through a digital optic, at 100 yards, I was getting under half inch group. I mean, under one inch, I'd have been happy with through a digital optic and again, for a budget upper. So that right there kind of just, um, again, kind of confirmed my beliefs that these are probably pretty solid products and people are just easy to judge when they come in at you know value prices. But again, draw your own conclusions. Those are my experiences. I then um, shot some 77 grain Hornaday match. The group did open up to 1.97 inches at 100 yards center to center. Again, these are all three round groups. And for those of you that are gonna criticize me about using three round groups, I'm sorry, I get it. Five round would be better, I acknowledge that. But I feel comfortable in my shooting abilities that a three round group is sufficient for me to just kind of test the water, so to speak, when I'm testing out a new platform without burning through a ton of expensive ammo nowadays. So moving on from that, I then tried some 55 grain Red Army Standard, which is some pretty cheap mass produced ammo from Russia um, that may kind of, the supply chain may dry up on that soon, but I guess it won't matter too much because that came in at 3.12 inches. So that was the worst group I got out of this upper was 3.12 inches with some really, really crappy um, Russian steel ammo. I did try some 62 grain Tula Soft Point as well. Now keep in mind it is a one and seven a twist barrel. So with a 62 grain crappy Russian steel, it did improve to 1.29 inches. So um, for me using this as just a hog gun where I'm, especially since it has a digital night vision scope on top, uh, I'm probably gonna be shooting within 200 yards of those hogs and a 1.29 inch group is gonna be more than enough for me personally. But again, my primary ammo coming in at under half an inch, I would say that this upper is good to go. And so like I mentioned, this was uh, really upper was used in support of reviewing this optic. I needed an upper to put it on and I fired another three round group at the end of that after 250 rounds. I don't even believe I cleaned the upper during the whole review process. And my final group came in at 0.672. Again, that was from a cold start, hadn't been shooting that day. So speculate what you want. Maybe I would have tightened it up to about half an inch. But again, sub MOA, um, everything, you know, tolerances, the barrel, uh, the hardware. I do have a good habit now of marking things with a paint pen if I'm testing it for the first time. Um, nothing loosened up or shifted, still um, hitting what I needed to hit and coming in at under an inch. So circling back to kind of the point I wanted to make in the beginning of this video, I was motivated to actually test this and document my experiences because some people are just trashing them purely because of price point. Uh, me personally, if I see someone's offering a solid product in my experience 
at an affordable price, well, that's a good thing. Then more people that are open to the firearms industry that may not be able to afford the insanely expensive hobby that this is, um, may, may you know open their avenues to get into it and then the firearm community as a whole grows. We can support each other when more of these BS laws keep rolling out, et cetera. I mean, it's, you know, it, it is a ripple effect. It's a good thing. Also, I don't know about you, but I don't like spending more money than I have to. It means I can get more toys, do more videos like this, um, you know, you name it. So my personal experience, um, in summary, it's been very good. I didn't have a single malfunction out of this upper uh, when firing roughly 250 rounds of mostly crappy steel ammo while doing a review of this optic that is currently on it. So those are my unbiased results. Draw your own conclusions. I won't tell you how to think or how to feel about it. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out is that I'm disappointed that people that have never even tried this product are out there on the internet saying it's a bad product and stay away from it. That's just not right. Especially if you have a significant following online. It's just, it's uh, it's pretty unfortunate. So um, I'll stop rambling guys. If you're still sticking around, I do appreciate you. Thank you as always for stopping by the channel and as always, have a good one.